Thanks, Rob. Um, yeah, just to say that we have, when you go out, uh, uh, there's quite a number of books and resource at the um, at the back there as you go out. There are a couple of books for sale. This my book is there, and also this very good book, A Great Place to Grow Old by Tina English, has two excellent chapters on dementia and caring. So that's really helpful material. And um, so I really recommend this book. But it's also about it's called Reimagining Ministry Among Older People. Excellent book. So both these books that really knock down prices. Um, and then there's other local resources and a whole number of other books that are not for sale, but for you to have a look at. I would encourage you to look at them because they're really, really um, helpful books and you can, you can uh, uh, get hold of them for yourselves. And then um, I just want to introduce the people who are gonna be speaking after the break. We're gonna have a session where we look at what can we do as churches and so you can meet the people now so you can talk to them during the break. So first, Sue Jelfs is going to come, is going to be speaking to us. Sue's from Russia's so Diocese. Do you want to stand up so people can see you? And uh, so do talk to Sue. And with her is Jenny, uh, who's an Anna Chaplin. And uh, I, do we have Anna Chaplins here? I can't remember. Uh, yes, uh, not here, but we do have Anna Chaplin. Yes. So Jenny's an Anna Chaplin. If you wonder what Anna Chaplin is, talk to Jenny. And then David Stewart is going to speak. Uh, where's David? There's David, so do grab hold of, so these are some of the people who are going to be speaking later, so do grab hold of them. And do have a look at the, Margaret, are there any, um, are there any book lists and so on? What happened about those? Do we have resource lists or book lists or? Sorry? Oh, okay. You've got, you've got, have we got their bag already? I didn't get a bag, so I didn't know about that. That's great. Um, so you've got that. And there's one more list of resources on the table there you'll see, which is produced by, um, by the Anna Chapman's. It's a very helpful uh, list of resources. So do have a look at those things as we go out and uh, do speak to Sue and Jenny and David and, of course, to Dr. Tim as well. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so what we're going to do now is we're going to break for, for um, half an hour um, for coffee and tea. So it is downstairs. So if you go down the stairs and then go around the rest of the door there, if the stairs look a little bit too challenging for you, there is a lift on the left hand side. So please do use that. Um, so we'll reconvene back in here at uh, quarter past 11. Thank you. Or not as the case, maybe. Absolutely. As you will, if you look at the program, as you will see from um, the session, which is uh, after this one, we're going to have a question and answer session with a, a panel, um, uh, the, uh, the all the keynote speakers, um, and so. We'd like if there's an opportunity for you to think some, think of some questions. Think of um, some questions that uh, you might want to ask. So that is loud, Ian. That is very loud. So, can I be heard? So, can people hear me? Yes. Yes. Good. Excellent. Thank you. I've had it turned up. So wonderful. Um, so. Um, Yes, yeah, so there's some questions. So things have been thrown up by by um, by the the keynote speakers, or somebody else that you want to just talk about. And just you know, put it down. We're going to have a situation where I'll come around with a microphone and, and ask you what the questions are, etc. So we'll uh, just have a think through what you'd like to ask as questions. Um, Robin, am I handing back to you? Wonderful. Thank you very much, Rob. <clears throat> so we want to think in this next 20 minutes or so, how are churches responding? What are, the, what are the, some things that are being done by others and which we can learn from, uh, which we can speak about? So we've got two people who are gonna speak and also if you have things you'd like to share, this is a good chance you can, about what your church is doing, something different, feel free to do that. 
I'll introduce now Sue Jelfs, who's um, a reader in South Gillingham Parish and a focal minister. I'm not quite sure what a focal minister is, but I'll find out in a minute. What is a focal minister, Sue? Do you want to come? Are you going to tell us what a folk? I think you, if you use this mic. Yes, there it is. Okay. Thank you. Just tell us what a folk. Oops. Uh, yes, I, I think it's a fairly new term, um, and in in our context, it simply means I'm a I'm a lay minister. I'm not a, not ordained. <laughs> And we are a parish of four churches, which is quite unusual. And I am the leader of one of those churches. So we have a rector who is overall in over uh, the, the four churches. And then we actually have one full-time uh, stipendiary vicar and one self-supporting vicar and the rector and myself as the, uh, the four church leaders. So I'm part of a team. And there is another um, in Gillingham, another lay minister in charge of a church uh, St Mary's Island, which you may know, is in just as part of, of the Medway towns, and uh, he's a, also a lay leader. So no. I think it's there is actually a Grove booklet now on focal ministry. Oh, great! Well, but, let's, <laughs> let's get that. Anyhow, you're involved in setting up services for activities for people with living with dementia or carers, and so we're looking forward to hearing from you about that. Go ahead. Shall I continue to use this? Is that the right? Okay, lovely, thank okay. you. Yes, that's absolutely fine. Um, but it's really great joy to be here today. And I bring greetings from Julia Burton-Jones, who is our um, assistant bishop's wife and is also the lead for dementia care and uh, really, uh, really the ministry amongst older people across the diocese. She's had a heart for, for this for a long time. So I actually went to see her on Monday and she was very thrilled that Je Jenny and I were coming. I'm going to bring Jenny up in a minute um, to share, but just to give a little bit of my background, I'm a, a reader, but also my background is in nursing and midwifery. And really, in a sense, I think it was from that background and being involved particularly in practice nursing with people with families and those living with dementia that gave me a kind of heart and an awareness and some I did some training etc went even in the context of being a practice nurse and then in the parish probably about six seven, six years ago and probably more widely across the diocese we began to be really a little bit probably at the stage at which you are now uh, increasingly aware that there were massive gaps in ministry and help and support for both those living with dementia and for carers and so we began to think what we could do and it was it was we kind of developed it in a bit of a, a kind of i suppose um, uneven way across the across the diocese and one or two churches ran with it some haven't really got involved at all cafes sprung up and we started a dementia friendly service at our in our parish um, and that ran on a on a, an, an evening an afternoon actually it was an afternoon wasn't it um, which was like a cafe style service very informal very visual lots of of um of um sort of things that evoked memories and people came to care homes came in with little busloads of, of their of their residents which was really great as well as people from the parish with or without their carers and so it was a really lovely time and, we, and that then sadly had to come to a halt because of covid and then when it's restarted it's come in a slightly different guise and i'll get jenny in a minute to tell you what that's happened because i think we've just have been learning all the time about the best way it's a journey for everybody really and i think we've um we she'll tell us about the very because jenny has been fairly yes come up jenny because she's been fairly recently uh, licensed as an anna chaplain although has had a heart for a long time for people um for both ministry to older people generally and those living with dementia and so she did her training you were a, a pastoral assistant before that weren't you yeah then i was a i'm a licensed lay minister as well and then um sorry uh, yeah so i became i was a pastoral assistant from 2009 and then about four years ago i transferred to llm licensed lay ministry which is the same as a reader but in rochester we call us we're now llms um and i've been an anna friend since um about four years um and her friends were the role evolved for people that wanted to help but didn't have the time commitment 
that Anana Chaplin needs. Um, and so, and then I've been thinking about this. I actually sort of retired <laughs> at the end of last year. Um, and I felt now the time was right to explore Anna Chaplincy. And it just so happened that Bishop uh, Simon was coming to our parish in January. So that's how it happened. <laughs> that's great, thank you. So I mentioned about the services, the dementia friendly services, and the restarting of them have been come under a different name and a slightly different sort of feeling, haven't yeah. they? Can you tell a bit about and how that's linked with the Bible Reading Fellowship as well? Yes, you uh, yeah, so um, we've, we've restarted our services uh, in January uh, as Messy Vintage. I don't know if any of you have heard of Messy Vintage. Have you heard of Messy Church? Well, Messy Vintage evolved out of Messy Church, and it's for older people. Um, but it runs along the same line. So we have very simple service, um, and then we have a craft activity, um, and then we all just sit around chat and have tea and coffee. So um, one of the reasons for Messy Vintage was, one, we wanted to do something different, but also we wanted to wider it. So people um, living with dementia, but also people that may have learning difficulties or just don't want to sit through an hour long service on a Sunday and a long sermon. Um, so, we're trying to widen it to, and, we, and it, although it started in our parish, we're hoping to get the word out across the deanery so that more people are able to come to it. So the first one in Jan January, is it January? Mm. Yeah. <laughs> um, no, we didn't do it, we did February. The first one was in February and we'd done all this planning and then I got COVID. <laughs> And I couldn't go, but luckily my helpers, we've got, we've got a great team that we all work together um, and they carried on and they did, um, they painted jam jars and then put a, um, an LED tea light in them and we were talking about the light of Christ shining out and they was all able to take their jam jars home with them. Um, last, this month, we, well, we had to move into the community centre for one month. So we had the use of the kitchen. So uh, one of our team bought ready, the dough already made and we gave them all some dough and they made bread rolls, which we then cooked while we were having our, our tea. And then they was able to take their bread rolls home with them. But um, I'm quite excited about it. It's early days, don't know where it's gonna go, um, but we keep praying and I keep thinking, if this is what God wants us to do, then he will keep opening the doors and people will come so that's where we are at the moment oh yeah and it's about brf so anna chaplaincy um is, is funded is part of comes under the umbrella of um brf um it was started um by debbie thrower um about 10 years ago and it is just taken off it's just grown all over the country um northumberland the um right down to Guernsey and Jersey. Um, and actually in Rochester, I, I can't remember the exact figure, but it is just growing. We always seem to be having somebody being uh, commissioned as a Nana friend or a Nana chaplain. So it, it's quite exciting, yeah. Anna chaplaincy. Uh, Anna chaplaincy are people that um, working with people of faith, non-faith across all denominations um, caring for their spirituality but also being advocates for older people um, and just caring about them and their families um, and Anna Chaplin you you sort of agree to don't give up a day a week but that's I mean my my day a week is spread over the week I don't actually do a whole day um, we started now that we're COVID restrictions are lifting. We've started going into a local care home um, and doing a service in there once a month. So we're committed to doing that. Um, yeah. So my idea is to get these links formed with the care homes and um, and in the wider community. Um, and I've also just recently um, 
our local um, Age UK group, Age UK Medway, uh, they've now they've were asking for volunteers to become community ambassadors. Um, so we're not to take on another role, but um, if I was in a church in our area talking about this, I would then say, I would actually bring into it about Age UK. Um, so it's, I just feel it's all coming together. All what I'm, my, my ministry um, has always been with older people. Uh, that's where I feel my heart is. So There are leaflets on, there's a, you'll see a banner to the left there about Anna Chaplincy and there are leaflets which will give you quite a comprehensive bit about the background. Um, and you could, if you go on the BRF website, it, there's also quite a lot about Debbie Thrower. And it, could you say a little bit, I know we've talked at coffee with one or two people about the carers drop in, because I think there's quite a few people who are carers here. And this was a thing we really felt was, was a really important way to go to support people caring. Uh, yeah, about the same time that we started our dementia friendly church services, um, we realised that what it was the carers that also needed support and help um, so we started uh, this uh, we called it carers coffee morning and it started in one of our churches but then we it, it wasn't really being that really well attended so somebody went to a local garden center and said would they allow us to have an area and run it there and they very kindly they did and they gave us a, a, a they, Give us a call, give us a large area cordoned off um, every month. And um, obviously, all that stopped through COVID. And then it started again in September. And it's just really going. And people come, carers come on their own if they've managed to get a couple of hours off to um, some, somebody sitting with the person they're caring for, or they come together. But they can go and have a chat to somebody because there's always somebody to sit and chat to their loved one and listen to them. Um, and we're very lucky in Medway. We've got um, an Admiral nurse and she's very supportive. She actually um, tells people about our coffee morning and directs them to come. But she also uses it as a meeting place because she's got a lot of people there. So she'll come and she'll stay for the whole two hours and we'll just go around chatting to people, making appointments to see them, giving them support. Um, and we had somebody from um, one of the local carers association last month going around talking to people. So it has really been a great success. Um, and they're not people that come to church, they're just people that come from all over the place. Um, so yeah, that, that is really taken off and it's, it seems to be. But the good thing is that some a couple that come to the coffee morning have started coming to messy vintage so so it is it's all it all seems to be coming together which is really good thank you jenny it's just it's just really the whole thing has just grown so much i think we probably used up all our time didn't we so yeah thank you very much there will be opportunity in the q's and a's i'm sure fine just leave it there and come here thanks so much sue and, and jenny and we can hear more about it we'll have time to ask more questions and also to think together what we can do in our church. I'm going to ask David Stewart now to come and tell us about the Barnabas group here, in, here at, all, at All Saints. Thank you. Is this working okay? Can you hear me? Thank you, Robin. Well, good morning or good afternoon now, isn't it? Um, my name is David Stewart and I'm a member of the Barnabas Support and, and indeed we are actually your hosts here this morning and it was the Barnabas group that organized this conference and I think it's gone very well so far, particularly the quality of our speakers, tremendous. Um, I'm going to use just a little bit of my own personal story to introduce Barnabas. I lost my wife Theo to vascular dementia just over four years ago after 63 years and a bit of married life. It was on Boxing Day 2017. Yes, I know, what a lousy day for Theo to choose to go. But there we are. 
We've been very happy living in southwest Scotland for 16 years and until 2012 when Theo started to show signs of memory loss. And it wasn't long before a phone call came through from my family living here in Crowborough, suggesting that we were too far away and we should move closer. Well, most families in similar positions will get such a phone call. And so with great reluctance, we downsized to a bungalow in Crowborough. And as it turned out, the move was the right course to take. I shall not go into the details of Theo's journey through dementia, but rather expand on how we got involved with Barnabas. We were introduced to Margaret Gould here in All Saints, and were invited to her home for coffee to meet other members like Sue Maki and Monica Hopkins. Both Margaret and Sue had lost their husbands to... Hold on a sec. To dementia. And thus the idea of a support group took shape with Margaret. Margaret very much the leading light. And indeed, I should just say that she is very much the leading light in organizing today as well. And we used to meet in our respective homes for coffee and prayers for a few months, by which time other families had become involved and we had outgrown our living rooms and decided to move here to All Saints with their excellent facilities literally below us, which you've just actually um, experienced. We now arrived at the point where Barnabas support is very much part of all life, all saints daily life. We started a monthly Wednesday worship service in the afternoon, which is a time suitable to members of the Barnabas support and designed to be short with hymns that everyone knows. This service is now a fixture in the church calendar and open to all. Our original impromptu coffee mornings now have some structure to them, again held monthly, to include activities designed to stimulate, encourage participation and to be really enjoyable. It's very rewarding to see persons who live alone and have become very introspective blossom out, get involved and share their own experiences in life. And then on occasions we plan trips such as a ride on the Bluebell Railway with a cream tea on board, that's extremely popular. And we have Christmas lunches and things like that. Today Barnum's support is providing a service. To say that um, Barnum's support is providing a service is to my mind a very, very, very bland way of describing who we are. What I do know, however, is that we're needed and membership is growing, and frankly, I wish it wasn't. But we're living in a real world. I'll just finish off by going back to Thea, my dearest wife. I looked after her for six years in our bungalow, with the help of some really excellent carers. I'm glad I did it, but I know the complete dedication and indeed personal sacrifice of your own freedom is not for everyone. If you are facing that decision, do plan ahead, talk with your family, and please, please pocket all pride because you are not alone and help is out there. Thank you so much. Um... <clears throat> Don't go. Can I pick up on your last, you're not alone, and you're making the same point that I think Tim has also made, I made, we need support from each other, but how do you get people involved? Do you find people are reluctant to come, or are they willing to come? I think they're reluctant to come to start with, because perhaps they're feeling slightly embarrassed, maybe ashamed even, and frightened of the future. They don't want to expose themselves. Absolutely. But then how does that, how do you, how do you encourage them to come then? Um, through meetings like this, through personal contact, through making friends and talking with them and persuading and so on. There's no shortcut to it. It's a long haul. 
That's very interesting. We're, we're in our church trying to think how we can do it, and I think you're right. It doesn't happen easily. And you have people coming together, a person living with dementia and their caregiver. How does that work? Does it work well? Uh, yes, it does. Um, especially with, with um, Barnabas and so on, uh, we encourage the carers to come with I'm going to say their charges. You understand what I mean. <laughs> it describes it well. Uh, and and uh, I think both benefit from the experience of sharing what's going on. Yeah, thank you. That's really helpful. I don't know if anybody else has got any quick, you want to say anything quickly about other um, examples of other things that, that are happening in, in your church? Or, yeah, please. I'd like to say that we work back to Lucas. We have parents for Right. Um, there are some leaflets at the back, which is just the, the Barnabas calendar of the, the dates in which we have our monthly Wednesday worship, and also another one for the coffee mornings. The program goes through for 18 months or so, so that everybody is eager to come, and they do. Thanks. Alan, you're going to... Say something, shall I give you the... Yeah. Okay. Thank you, I'll speak from here. Uh, the name's Alan Penny, I'm chairman of the um, Crowborough Community Church, uh, which we call ourselves the Oasis, it's in Beacon Road. And, and we've uh, been started to get more involved with uh, the World Dementia Action Alliance since uh, middle of last year. And each month we have a community cafe on a Thursday afternoon, between two and four, next one's this week where we provide um, uh, refreshments and then a form of entertainment. This month, we have the uh, Youth 3A Choir singing for us. Really? And, and they're one of the, <laughs> one of the representatives. So it's, it's quite a, it tends to be quite a lively group. A lot of people like the singing, particularly if you spoke about earlier with, uh, with Tim and others, like joining in and jumping about a bit and doing a bit of dancing. So we, all this is all perfectly um, acceptable, no problems. And we have the help from various sources in Crowborough. We've got the Rotary Club now involved in the Alliance. We've got the uh, Crowborough Town Council, which I happen to be a town councillor as well. Um, and various other organisations come along to help us out. So that's every last Thursday, every month. And we also have a uh, open cafe every Monday morning, which anybody can come to. We don't have entertainment, we do have food. And of course, the, the church itself is now joined up to the the charter for the uh, World Dementia Action Alliance. And um, our premises are open for any use by the Dementia Alliance without any charges or anything. There's no higher fees and we provide. Our, our um, philosophy is that uh, we want to be good neighbors. We want to be part of the community, provide friendship, support to anybody who needs it. Uh, and so um, we will host meetings that have got a legitimate community interest. Thank you. Thank you. Does anybody else have anything you want to share quickly? We've got a couple of minutes. Yes. Hello. Hello. It's wonderful to be here. And I just feel this real sense of love and community, which is wonderful. Um, I'm not from a specific church, but words and actions. We we were every day. It's um, and I've been here before. I think I'm trying to justify why I'm standing here. <laughs> um, so uh, from a very personal very personal place. My mum is living with Parkinson's disease dementia and we live in Rotherfield, um, a home of RSM, which is just an incredible organisation. And um, basically, I wanted my mum when she got the diagnosis to um, have a really bespoke experience and also give my dad respite. Um, and I learned that my that, you know, my mum wasn't someone who fitted into bigger groups and she needed much smaller. And so I set up the Good Company, which is a nonprofit, and we're just piloting it here in Cobra. And just hearing today uh, and stories and coming together and meeting so many people who have had experiences of their loved ones living with dementia, it's really just given me the, the, the you know, the compunction just to keep going and just make this make this work because everyone who has dementia, if you've met one person with dementia then you've met one person with dementia and we really need to create solutions which are really person-centered and really bespoke and it, and we all need to come together 
And I just wanted to just say thank you so much for today because it's been a real eye opener and just lovely to see so many people in the room and really care and come up with a solution together and support each other. Anyway, uh, so I'll, let, I'll let you go. <laughs> no, the, the good company you said, is that right? Yeah, yeah, it's a, it's a respite service. It's, a, it's five hours, so you get a... Sorry, it's a respite service, basically. So you, as a carer, will have your loved one picked up. So my mum, this week, she was picked up at 9.30 and she went to uh, the National Trust and had a lovely walk around the National Trust. Then she had a coffee and then she came back to the host's house had lunch and then in the afternoon she did pottery and so our whole approach is based on everything that your loved one is or who they are we find out all about them and we curate an experience so they can carry on doing what they love doing which is what the aim of the game is fantastic and one little thing there's a book over there called when with wendy mitchell as well and it says what i wish i knew about dementia and just a little thing today, anecdote, is that my mum's been really struggling, you know, with doing her laces up. And by me doing her laces up, I am eroding her independence. So today, for Mother's Day, she's getting some slip-on trainers. And I'm just saying that it's just, you know, those that what I knew about dementia, just those little tips and hints, because every day our, our role is to give that independence and keep that independence and purpose going. And Thank you so much for sharing all of your stories as well. And yeah, I, I made all the mistakes, but thank you. <laughs> right, so any, any other, yeah, please. Well, go for it. Hi there, my name's Iona, and I am very proud to work at RSM, Rutherfield St. Martin, started by Joe Evans, who I believe had a lot of contact here as well. So the dementia work is still going strong. She still comes back and checks on us, which is great. She's never very far away. Um, so yeah, just to say that we have a really good support network for carers. Um, I've been working with Reverend Sandy Wickens and we have a Everybody Welcome uh, church service in St. Denny's. The next one will be the Wednesday of Dementia Action Week, which I think is the 18th. Um, and again, it's a shorter service. Uh, they do messy uh, church, so I'm gonna to speak to her about doing a similar one but um yes it's a much more relaxed church service um a lot of the people that i support the carers and a lot of them don't have a faith which is sad because they do feel alone they feel really really alone um so i think they are you know they're missing out on that but at the end of the evening when they've shut the door and they're at home and their loved one is you know tucked up safely in bed they feel really alone so the time to talk support group that we have is especially good for those because they, they then have each other even if it's a whatsapp message or, or we have regular zoom meetings we have face-to-face -face meetings and it's just a way of them coming together and just being open honest not feeling judged um yes there's no there's no shame there's no and they're just a lovely open honest group so that's rotherfield st martin if there's anything there that um anyone would like to thank you know about that's great Rob, shall we, we've actually got into local resources now, but shall we take five minutes we want to discuss now and then move on, is that going to be okay? So the, um, the questions, I suppose, we've uh, uh, put in the, in the program, we'd like you to again, just discuss the people you're talk, turning around and talking to is, what encouragement and challenges are you facing? Now we've touched on some of those, but uh, it's time for us to get sort of a bit more sort of uh, personal. Uh, and, uh, and then the question, the second one is, uh, what should our next steps be? Um, what do you think? And it may be that you don't know, and that part, maybe part of the thing that you want to ask the panel um, or the people around you. Um, there's lots of expertise in the room. Um, from uh, and so, if we could uh, take um, if we could take sort of ten minutes. So I'll it's actually so it's uh, it's ten to now, and I will pull you back in at, at twelve o'clock. So uh, let's have ten minutes, okay? So just in small groups, just you sitting there, the questions are in your notes. It says, what encouragements and challenges are you facing and what should our next steps be? Have a chat to people next to you. See what you think. Living on their own, yeah. Even more confused. What? Yeah. No. And I really worry about people's mental health. Yeah. I mean, you know. 
If you could be bringing your conversations to a close, that'd be wonderful. And, um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to invite, um, I'm going to invite the panel um, and the people who have who've spoken to us so far. I'm going to invite them to come and sit up here. Six as well, six, okay. If you'd like to come up, that would be great. So, yes, so yeah, yeah. could, could have been, but it, the Dangerous. question is that brings it to light. What was, it brings to light what was going on underneath. I'll talk Where's to Dr. Dr. Billington? Where's he gone? There he is. Absolutely. He's a runner. Cool day. Do you want another one? No, we're okay. Good. What about you? No, no, I'm going to, I don't need a chair. You're going to need a yes. chair. Uh, right, I need you another chair. Do you need another chair? Sorry. I can't. Oh. I can't count. Okay. No, no, it's okay. You're in. Cool. Same. No, 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 not important. I can't count. There's Go more ahead. people up here than there is down there. Thank you. So, um, Questions. Uh, what? What? Uh, this is the opportunity where we've we've got people to ask questions to about uh, about a whole anything you want really um, to do with this particular subject. Um, so, Judy, can you speak to the microphone. Thank you. Just a thought. Um, hearing Robin and David, mm, that you looked after your wonderful wives to the very end, but there are people, aren't there, that cannot do it and I think it would be good just to have a comment about that because it could be that that person would feel guilty if they had to put their family member or whatever into a home so a comment on that please who'd like well, to while you bring the mic, I'll just say a quick word I think can my good friend Tim advise us that we look consider all the options look for every possibility so we did. We looked at care homes. We looked at having a live-in carer, and we just explored all the. I think you're absolutely right. We have to be open to every possibility, and not feel a sense of guilt. It's not easy, but no guilt. Can I pick up on that? And I think uh, that uh, trial periods can be very helpful. Uh, so treating it as a holiday, uh, and maybe saying, you know, I need to go to this or that why don't you try this as a holiday, one or two weeks, uh, and then see what happens. Uh, that, that may give you a very clear idea of whether or not they want to go in or are happier there. But I, I think the living carers can be a lot cheaper than uh, going into a care home. But it's also quite hard to arrange. <laughs> and at the moment, it's very difficult, certainly in this area. Um, the different people who are providers are having problems in meeting the need. So that's another problem there. But I think, my, I would say that um, it's very important to do it gradually, as they were just um, suggesting, just respite care initially is a good idea. It's a real help. I need a break. You know, you have to be able to say that. I need a break. Hard, but necessary. Uh, when it comes to longer term, I think uh, in the end, my family were partly the ones that enabled me to go further and to say this has got to stay. But also, I was fortunate in that early on, Bill, my husband, had insight about what was going to happen to him as a doctor. And he said, you're going to need help later on. And I was able to remind him of that even when it was way past that stage. Mm -hmm. And I said, you were quite right when you said that, you know, and this is something that will really help me, but it doesn't mean to say that it's going to change. So, yeah, thank you. Thank you. Just a quick thing, Judy, on, on your question. Um, as far as I was concerned, what I did was I did my homework. I, I looked at several home, several uh, respite cares and several rest homes. Rest homes is the wrong word, I'm sorry, but you know what I mean. Um, so that I was prepared. And then I not only did I have my three hours every week, which I disappeared off, I then also brought in 
and paid for full-time carers so that I would have a week's holiday or a fortnight's holiday somewhere, knowing that my family weren't too far away if the balloon went up, which it did on one occasion, didn't it, Sheila? Uh, but that's by the way. Thank you very much. Wonderful. Other questions? Trish. Thank you. Um, you might think this is a rather trivial question, but it's something that uh, came in. Um, my husband showed, showed me that was in the Times probably a few weeks ago now. And it was all the question of diet for prevention of um, dementia, not would be total. I just wondered if anybody could comment on that. It was such a few things like blueberries, eggs, green broccoli, home fed beef. Can't remember all the other olive oil. Has anyone heard of this? So, so the, the chocolate cake we had earlier wasn't on that list. <laughs> I've, got, I've, got, I've got a mic. Uh, is, my, is my microphone on? Can you hear? I think, I think basically, uh, please don't get hung up about it. Don't define your life by your diet. Uh, I think people can get so careful about their diet and what they will and they will not eat that it actually is another burden in an already burdened life. Um, so by all means, uh, use fruit and the, the Mediterranean type thing with a lot of fish and so on. But I, I don't think it's going to make a lot of difference. Nutritious and tasty is more important than getting fussed about whether or not you have blueberries. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry? Oh, I don't, I don't think any, to be honest, I don't think any of these diets are going to guarantee that you don't get Alzheimer's. If you could come up <laughs> with a diet, there would be 850,000 people who would be very grateful to you. I, I know, and I, I think, I, I, quite honestly, I think it's very unhelpful, and I think it puts a burden. So treat it with um, caution. Uh, by all means, try them. I mean, we had a friend who was, had cancer and she ate, um, I think it was, she, what was she on? Patricia Tudibran? She Yeah, she was just root vegetables all the time. She looked like a carrot. <laughs> Thank you. A question over there. Absolutely. Kathy. A question that's coming on Zoom is what resources are available for people with dementia under 65? Who would like to, uh, <laughs> would like to take that one? Well, I don't really know the answer, but I think very few. It's as, as Tim told us earlier, about 45,000, is that right? Yeah. With early onset dementia, it's a, it's a much smaller group than the much larger 850,000. Books like Wendy Mitchell's book is fantastic. Um, somebody I used to know in her recent one, and, and somebody's telling, telling me earlier about, talk to people who have early onset dementia. Some of them are really remarkable people. Beyond that, I don't, I don't really know. I think it's a growing area. I don't know why it's growing so fast, but it is growing. Um, so the short answer is not too sure, but we'll try and find out. There's a, a couple in our church, he's got dementia, he had to retire from IBM um, uh, very early on. And uh, she sings in our choir, or at least she did, and then she stopped coming to the choir, and then, uh, uh, she, which she missed tremendously, but she didn't feel she could leave him sitting on his own. Now that's an indication of actually how poor our church is, that we should have long ago, someone should have said, I'll sit with him while you sing in the choir. Much better was the suggestion of my wife, it's so infuriating. My wife has all the good ideas. And, and, and she said, why don't you uh, come into the choir and have your husband sit next to you? And so that's what happens. And so he is involved, coming back to your identity, he's involved in the choir. He doesn't sing a note, I don't think. Um, and that's probably a good thing. But his wife, 
his wife does, and it's revolutionized their life. It's little things. David. There's just one thought that comes to me, uh, the resources, I would have thought the first resource would be your own family. I'm sure that's where, one, where it's all going to start. Okay, the family are going to need help as well. But I think if you've got a, a family that understands what's going on, that's a good starting point as far as I'm concerned. Mm -hmm. We've got um, here with us today, Celia, whose husband, John, loves singing and they go to Ditch the Slippers, is that right? Yeah, um, once a week, no, once a month now, I think it is, down at St. Richard's, once a fortnight, yeah. Um, and uh, John really loves that. And when he comes to our group, also, we, we always have some music and some singing. Clive, who is with us today, he plays the guitar. And uh, John loves to join in and sing. So that's, that's a very good way. And I think those groups uh, find out about them because they're, they're great. There are some leaflets about Ditch the Slippers at the back. Thank you. Uh, in your uh, packs, uh, and also if you're online, if you emailed, um, there is lots of uh, links to different organisations. And also, if you're inside Wealdon as an organisation, um, Wealdon Council have a, um, a regular weekly email that goes out, putting all the different places, the different dementia um, uh, groups that go on throughout the district. And it's just simply get hold of the dementia team and get it on their emails. Um, and uh, they will they give you the things you like. Hello there, I'm Leslie and I work as an activities coordinator in, um, at the Priory, which is uh, uh, just down at Inham's Wood in Crowborough, and uh, it's acquired brain injury. And we have a lot of music sessions, and I'm just saying to a young lady here, that it's a different part of the brain seemingly where you actually have your memory of music. And we have someone who does music therapy and is obviously trained in that. And when he comes along, there's some people that, because they have aphasia or all sorts of things, multiple issues. But when it comes to music, they can pick up an instrument and they'll sing beautifully. And yet in their normal day, they can't say very much at all. So I think, as you were saying, music's amazing. And at my church, we do have some people that again, don't say very much, but if they're in the choir, they come to life. Thank you. Mm. Other, other questions? Mary, and then Clive. Thank you. Um, I just wonder if uh, the panel um, got any ideas. Obviously, we have the Barnabas service um, here, and um, some of us are due to go in when they open, into nursing homes to run um, services. So, you know, <laughs> there's a diverse group of people in a, in a, I think it's sometimes used as everybody can go in that room now and have the service, um, not perhaps knowing what they're going to face. I don't know. Um, but how would you think the, the loved ones that you've cared for uh, you know, respond to a Christian service um, and what sort of content works really? Um, or is that too long a question? I could have the microphone back, Mary, that'll be great. Thank you. <laughs> Otherwise the question does just get longer. <laughs> yeah, that's, I'm, I'm coming to <laughs> I think it's it's that's a really interesting question because I think it's really important that it's um, because as you say there's a wide group of people and what's really important is it doesn't come across as patronizing mm -hmm. and treating everybody as if, as if they're about five um, and so it's kind of making things very clear like having uh, if, if you're singing for instance singing hymns to have decent sized print um, and mm -hmm. things that are, are pretty common sense but also being aware that it's important to be visual because we've, we've just been really aware that things that pictures that evoke memories are really helpful and that can be done 
make it almost like a pub quiz type style. So it's not, it's not childish, but it's, but it's clear for people who are losing that uh, ability maybe to read, read things. And I'd like to just say something about music that, that um, we had, I worked in a care home as a, as a, a pastoral care coordinator, she involved all the activities. Um, and we had a lot of people who were living with dementia and quite a lot who were not able to speak anymore. And so often music, whether it was old time music hall stuff or old hymns, just really evoked something. Even if people didn't normally hold a conversation, you'd find they could remember the words of Amazing Grace. Or, and and it, a word I remember as a Christian, I, re, I began to really pray that God would speak to them and would break through where their mental capacity was not you know, thinking quite as clearly. And there's this verse that says that the Holy Spirit ministers to our spirit. And I kind of I really believe that there's a kind of it's almost like a that God can speak to people even when they can't when their brain is in a fog, He can bring a, a sense of His peace and His love and and His acceptance. So I just encourage anyone who has got that kind of a ministry with people with quite advanced dementia that actually God can still speak to people mm. and speak and make them aware of His presence. Mm. Mm. Um, I would just say, just keep it simple and have lots of music, lots of hymns. Um, when we were doing our dementia friendly service, um, what was that book we used? Living Stones, I think. Yeah. I can't remember it's by. But um, so one, one service was um, based around keys, just normal household keys. So and we had different keys and we'd talk about, you know, where they lived and, and things like that. Um, I think you did one once on windows, the curtains, yeah, curtains, curtains. Yeah, that um, was that was and and just you know what what did you, what do you see out of your window or just really simple but but and hymns that um, are well known and that they just their faces just light up as Sue said even if they aren't very don't communicate but they will sing a hymn. Music is just amazing therapy. Yeah, really. I just reiterate that um so i've had the privilege of praying with a number of people um who at uh, the point of death have got dementia mm -hmm. and one of the things that when you do is it's two things i always do one is to pray the lord's prayer in the traditional version with them and the number who join in but don't speak to anybody else yeah. and the other one is the uh, 23rd psalm and again they join in because it's the familiarity and i think that's the key clive I've got a medical question for Dr. Billington. Um, I think you mentioned a treatment in your talk earlier. My wife uh, has a treatment called river stigmine, which is a transdermal patch applied each day. Um, you or Robin mentioned an alternative. I didn't catch the name of it. And I wonder also how effective is river stigmine? It's supposed to slow down the process, but as far as we're concerned, it doesn't seem to have any noticeable effect. And the only effect it has, it makes her skin itchy, uh, which adds to her problems. She's on a number of other medications for other problems. So uh, we're wondering whether, and I have spoken to the GP about this, whether some of these treatments could be stopped if they're not appearing to do any good. I wonder what your thoughts might be on river stigmine. And could you tell me again what that other name was that you mentioned earlier? There was some sort of treatment that you mentioned. Thank you. Yes, the other medication is called Aricept, uh, which is probably the most commonly used. Aricept, A-R-I-C-E-P-T. And um, I think, I think what you've just said is very important, that it is worth trying some of these. Uh, now, the difficulty, of course, with something like Aricept is it's meant to prevent it getting worse. Now, if you've got pain and you take a painkiller, you can tell whether it's working very quickly. What you can't tell with Aricept is whether it's delaying things very quickly. Um, but if there are side effects to them, stop them. Or at least that is if the side effects outweigh the, the benefits. 
And as I said, it's only 40 to 70%. That's pretty wide, isn't it? But 40 to 70% of people who will be, for whom Aricept is any help. So, you know, certainly discuss reducing medication. We call it polypharmacy. And uh, it is a very, very big issue in uh, uh, us folk who are getting older. We pop tablets like there's no tomorrow. And uh, uh, very often there is a clash between the tablets we're taking. And a visit to your pharmacist is often quite useful to say, listen, these, you know these are the tablets I'm getting. Do you think any of them are counteracting or interfering or accentuating one another that we should perhaps consider reducing? So yes, by all means, talk through the medication, but they're not cures. I'm sorry, I would love to say they are, but they're not. They're delaying um, by up to two years. That's the common thought um, of, of the deterioration. So if, the, if, the, if it's a downward trend like that, they plateau for a little while and then it goes down. But that may be an important two years for you and for your carers. Does that answer your question? Thank you. Uh, any other questions? Right. I have a friend who's uh, in his 50s and he's suffering with Parkinson's disease. Can you just explain, is Parkinson part of the dementia group or, or what exactly is it, please? Gosh. You asked some very good questions, and I'm, I'm on my metal now. Um, uh, Parkinson's disease is a different condition, but it does predispose to dementia. Um, now, I also mentioned that one of the side effects of dementia is that you get this mo movement, and that is a, a, a little bit Parkinsonian type movement. Now, the Parkinson's disease, we used to, to talk about them as pill rolling. It's, it's a sort of repetitive thing. And with the, with the steps, you, 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 instead of taking decent steps, you take shorter and shorter steps. And it almost looks as if they're chasing their own balance, as it were. So, but that's, that, is a, that is a condition in itself. But the relationship is that unfortunately with some people with Parkinson's disease, they will develop dementia. And that would usually be the Louis body. Well, I have a friend exactly who, who has Parkinson's and he's also developed now very similar to Levy body. It's called Parkinson's type of dementia. There is that connection for some people. Thank you. Any other questions? Trish? That's okay. I've been told by a friend um, that there is a dementia nurse that comes around is um, do they um i just wondered what they're what they should what they do if they just have you know perhaps they're in touch with the consultant or they might nurses who are a very particular very focused type of service which is only available in certain parts of the country so uh, admiral nurse but also we had for example in our local council community dementia nurse and he it was a he in his case um, came and was able to give us every kind of help that we needed. But it, again, it depends on your situation. So you need to find out what are the local resources for you. Well, yes, the, this, this particular the community dimension nurse could introduce us to other services like uh, fixing a rail in our staircase or incontinence are very, very useful for that. Yeah. Alan. Yeah, thank you. I just wanted to say that um, it was mentioned about the World Dementia Action Alliance. The, the aim is to make Crowborough a dementia friendly town. That doesn't, doesn't just include the churches, it includes supermarkets, banks, shops, everybody. And uh, as the Oasis, we've signed up to the charter and are working with them and possibly with the Chamber of Commerce, Rotary Clubs, etc., to try and encourage all outlets within Crowborough to, to take on the dementia-friendly charter and to uh, encourage their staff to do dementia-friendly sessions or whatever they might be called in the future. 
so that when someone goes into a shop, there's a degree of patience and not uh, trying to get you through the till within two seconds, but actually listening to people, recognizing their issues and helping them without being um, patronizing. So if someone, for example, has got their waitrose card upside down, they say, oh, just turn around, sorry, no problem. Well, we'll have that and we'll do it. And things of that nature. Other supermarkets are available, of course. So, <laughs> But it's just to say, the, the aim is that we do it to High Street Blitz at some point to try and get everybody signed up within Kroger so they have an understanding of what dementia is and how to treat people with the illness and how to support their carers. And in terms of the, the site that uh, was mentioned, wellbeing at wilden.gov.uk will put you in touch with the uh, Dementia Alliance. Thank you. Thank you. Wonderful. Thank you very much. And thank you very much to the panel. Thank you for, for your answers and thank you for your questions. Uh, should we give them a round of applause? On your, um, uh, in your, your uh, booklets, uh, the thing that is next is just to talk about local support. I think we've talked about that. And as Margaret said, there's quite a lot in your, uh, in your packs. Is there anything else you wanted to say on local support? Yeah, so yeah, yeah. We found it quite helpful to produce the little card that you've got in your packs. We put one in just so you give, might give you an idea if you come from a different area. But this is just, this is what we do. This is how we do it. This is our aim, like to know more. Those are the headings, just a simple thing. But for somebody who's a bit unsure, you know, well, what's this weird thing about? Um, it just means that you've got something that um, makes perhaps a bit more sense and so on. And um, I should mention that we call ourselves Barnabas because Barnabas in the Bible was known as being an encourager. That's what his name means, actually. And so it's all about encouragement. And I think that's really the key to a lot of it. Thank you. And actually, I'm encouraged today because so much has changed since I had, and David probably would agree, since we were trying initially to help those that we were caring for. And th that's really a big encouragement. So let's go on that same track and help others. And especially let's encourage other churches to sort of start thinking about this and thinking, well, yes, maybe we should take some action here. What can we do? Thank you. Everything on the, that left-hand table to the right of Robin's books is free. And I brought quite a lot of livability booklets and free uh, leaflets about Anna Chaplincy and Messy Vintage. And there are bookmarks, so I'd really rather not take them home. So please, or take them to Julia. She'd be really delighted if they all went. So please do feel free to take anything that's not got a label on it saying that it's just for reference. Thank you. I just want to uh, reiterate. Yes, Edward. Yes, I'm coming back to that. It's on my list. Don't worry. That's fine. It's next. Thank you. Um, so uh, just as to, to, to reiterate something that Margaret was saying, that actually numbers of churches uh, are thinking about this. Um, uh, there are a number of churches for whom actually do lots of different things to do with, uh, with how to engage with dementia. However, it's just the tip of the iceberg. And so actually, if you're not from this area, or you go to a different church in this area and think about how to do that, then talk to other churches that do it, because actually it's about learning from each other. And in some of the rural areas, um, churches are partnering with each other in order to actually deliver this. Um, so I, I'm aware of one where they do a, a dementia cafe and service um, in one church, and it's always in the same church, but it's run by different churches. Because the key thing is to have the venue the same. And so they've done that, but the, but the people who run it are different in terms of the, so it's not a burden on one group just to sort of do this thing every week. It's, it's shared. It's a sort of, as so they're working together. And I think things like that, the more we can work together in this, the, the, the more effective it is. 
thank you particularly to the contributors um, for what they've said and how they've challenged us to make us think. I think um, in, the, um, in the spirit of what this conference is about, we should uh, finish this conference praying a prayer which is both familiar and recognize. So let's say the grace. May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Thank you so much. Have a great day.